In the second homework, where we implemented a neural network by hand, we trained that network by showing it one input target pair at a time. We can imagine the lost surface that would arise from checking the loss for every parameter combination as being very simple, since the loss only depends on one input target pair. Of course, again, a neural network with two parameters is not very realistic, but you can imagine that there's some dimensionality reduction being applied. So we may, for example, get a rather flat surface with a slight tilt. For a different input target pair, this can of course be different, so maybe it's tilting in that direction, but the idea is it's very simple. And it's very different from the actual loss surface that we would get from considering every input target pair. This surface may have a lot of hills and curvature, maybe some valleys and so on. On this more complex surface that takes every input target pair, so our whole dataset into account, the gradient descent will be much more informed since we know that our next step will optimize the loss for our whole dataset. We also call that type of gradient descent full batch gradient descent, since we only have one batch, which is just the dataset itself. The problem with full batch gradient descent is that we have to pass every single input target pair through our network just for one optimization step. This makes our model very slow to converge to a local optimum. So maybe we start here, we have to pass the whole dataset through our network just to take this small step, again pass it through and so on. Another downside is that we may get stuck in a bad local minima. So maybe there's here also a valley. And if we land here, there's no way of getting out. To address both of these issues, we switched to stochastic gradient descent. This is what we did in our manual implementation. And so what stochastic refers to is the fact that we randomly select an input target pair from our dataset for each gradient descent step. And the input target pair that we sample is an estimate for our whole dataset. This makes the model conversions much faster since we can take steps on the loss surface at a much faster rate. But of course we are not taking it on this very elaborate surface, but on these surfaces here, since they correspond to the loss surface for one input target pair. And you can imagine that our descent will be a lot more noisy, since we're not following some predetermined path. But instead one input target pair might signalize us to jump in that direction, and then the second one tells us to go in the opposite direction. But eventually we will get close to a local optimum based on what the majority of the input target pairs is suggesting to us. A very nice way to look at this is also from a top-down view. So we have here our loss surface, but from a top-down view. Here at the bottom we have maybe our first parameter, and then here is the second parameter, so both starting at zero here maybe. And then let's say at the center here, there will be our local optimum or minima. And so then the full batch gradient descent will follow the deepest descent until it reaches this local minima. Using the stochastic gradient descent, we will jump around a lot. And then eventually we will arrive at the local minima. But we will not hit it directly, because even if we would hit this point here, so the local minima at some point, then while this local minima holds for the whole dataset, if we take another step with the stochastic gradient descent, some input target pair might tell us to go to the right again. And so what we actually do is we jump around this local minima here. But this jumping property has also a great advantage, because it means that even if we encounter bad local minima, there's a chance that we will jump out. And so with stochastic gradient descent, we will eventually arrive at the largest basin. So maybe let's look at that from a 2D view. So if that is our loss surface here that we could generate based on all input target pairs, then the stochastic gradient descent will eventually take us here. And that is because we have more gradients pointing in that direction than in any other direction. So here for this local minima there are only few gradients and also here for this local minima there are fewer gradients compared to this large basin here. So in short, since it's so wide, we are more likely to fall into it. But now you may ask, what if the basin is large but not deep? 
then of course we would still arrive here, but it would be now a bad local minima. And so the fact that we will eventually jump out of bad local minima and go to better local minima only holds under the assumption that deeper minima also have larger radii, which is, I would say, a reasonable assumption to make. Okay, so stochastic gradient descent converges faster and we also have the chance to jump out of bad local minima, being attracted to those with the larger radii. But there is also a downside besides not reaching the actual local minima and it has to do with computation. Because if we pass in the input target pairs separately, then calculate the backward pass update error parameters and as a first step maybe do some pre-processing, then the overhead that comes with all these things eventually adds up and it becomes less efficient than when we pass in multiple input target pairs at once to get then one update. And so the idea is then to not stick with full batch gradient descent and also not with stochastic gradient descent, but instead with mini batch gradient descent. And what we do in mini batch gradient descent, the name already tells us, we take a batch, but not the full batch, but instead a mini batch. So maybe 10, 20, 32 input target pairs and for these we calculate then our gradient. This makes then our computations more efficient and also our steps are more informed. So we take less steps and also get closer to the actual local minima. And still we have the ability to jump out of bad minima and we don't have to compute the update based on the whole input dataset, making the computations rather fast. One final note, very large batch sizes tend to generalize worse on test data compared to when we are choosing smaller batch sizes.